We are going to talk about definitely a very pertinent um, subject to the Black community at this time. Um, and just before we dive into here, folks, I want to um, go ahead and start start us off because I'm going to give just a, a little bit of um, information for those of you who do not know. So we are getting ready to talk about critical race theory. And for those of you all who are not sure what critical race theory means, there is a definition by Professor Hosang from Yale University um, that says that critical race theory is a discipline analytical tool and approach that emerged in the 1970s and 80s, scholars took up the ways racial inequity persisted even after a whole set of landmark civil rights laws and anti-discrimination laws were passed and asked themselves, why is racism still enduring and how do we contribute to abolishing it? So just to simplify that for the folks out there, well, first, what I'm going to do is state what our official question on the matter is so that you all have that context. Our official question is, is the pushback against critical race theory a way to continue to whitewash history? So my answer to that question is yes. And the reason that I feel that way is because what essentially the issue has become is that the conversation about race and why systemic racism still exists today is now a topic that cannot be ignored. In the past, the white community had the benefit of not having to have certain conversations, right? Living in a box, living in a square, living in comfortability, worlds weren't disrupted. They could go on with their everyday life like, hey, black people can vote now. The world's a better place, right? What I was talking about earlier. Yes, that is an accomplishment when certain rights were given to us, but it did not fix the overall hierarchy issue of systemic racism. And the critical race theory itself is about what is causing systemic racism to still persist, even though there have been all these laws and et cetera that have come into place. And so when you open up that type of dialogue, you are now forcing uncomfortable conversations, right? You're forcing people to admit things that may not be in their comfort zone to admit. You're forcing people to recognize that, hey, racism is still a problem despite a black vice president woman, despite black people being the vote, despite Juneteenth becoming a holiday. Systemic racism is still a problem. And so when you have this situation, you push a narrative that makes certain people uncomfortable. And I think for that reason, people are looking at this like, oh, this is just a way to, you know, um, uh, make white people feel guilty for behaviors that happened in the past and et cetera, instead of looking at the bigger picture that we're not gonna actually progress to where we wanna be until people realize that racism still exists, it's still an issue and needs to be addressed. And that's what critical race theory, that's, that's the entire premise of the theory is to try to identify why it is continuing. So to our question, yes, pushing back against it is the way to whitewash history to a certain extent, because then you don't have to worry about adding certain narratives into the history book. But I would say the bigger issue is that it takes people out of a comfort zone that they're not willing or ready to come out of. 
And that is an individual issue just as much as systemic racism is everyone's issue. So those are my thoughts on it. I'm going to throw that to Mr. P.A.T. What say you, sir? So there has been a lot of talk in the matrix about critical race theory. I mean, the, the talk is still going on. All you hear is critical race theory, critical race theory, critical race theory. That's all we're hearing these days. I mean, I, I've been seeing it all over social media. It seems like it's a serious debate discussion right now. Basically, Republicans want it taken out of schools. Now, with this whole topic, critical race theory, or as some would call it CRT, if we want to shorten it, I got more interested in it after watching some interviews on BNC, Black News Channel. Mark Lamont Hill had people come on to, to provide more insight into why they are against critical race theory. After watching a couple interviews, I wanted to read more about it myself. One article I came across is about Governor Greg Abbott in Texas, someone who wants to abolish critical race theory. According to the article from the, the Texas Tribune, and the link will be in the description, quote, he signed into law a bill last week that restricts how current events and America's history of racism can be taught in Texas. It's been commonly referred to as the, quote, critical racist theory bill. Though the term critical race theory never appears in it, end quote. This same article gives a definition of critical race theory for those who don't know. Now, in a nutshell, I think this debate of whether or not it should be taught in schools is yet another distraction. It's a red herring. I think in general, America, more specifically white America, is tired of dealing with race. They're tired of hearing about it. They're tired of talking about it. In regards to the topic being a distraction, it's another way to change the subject about reparations. Sorry to cut you off, PAT. I'm going to let you finish, though. But um, I just want to say that, you know, if I'm gonna say, I want to use the word if, but um, you can't stop something if you keep making money off of it, you know? Right. That's correct. And and this and this is they can say well, how they, much they time. Yeah, they, they won't stop it because they're making money off of it. They make money, yeah. So they can say how tired they are of it, but when you have the same people in this matrix that's making money off the same thing, they're not going to stop. It's called capitalism, and that's how the U.S. is run. So mm -hmm. but I'm going to let you continue your point. Right. Yep. Yep, that's true. <laughs> Very true. Um, so, yeah, in regards to reparations, Reparations has been a hot topic lately, and the powers that be have found a way to try to change the subject. This whole critical race theory debate is showing a lot of guilt and fragility out there in the matrix. From what I've read so far about CRT, it is not something made to make white people feel guilty. It's not, it's not about making white people feel guilty about things like slavery, racism, and being white. It's not even about any of that. It's about looking further into how racism has been embedded in legal systems and policies. At the end of the day, the people who are against it seem to not want to deal with the truth of racism. Let's just be real. These people do not want to deal with the truth of racism. 
They just want to continue to keep their face in the sand and have their children put their face in the sand along with them. They simply just don't want to deal with race. In, in terms of conversation and dialogue, they, they just don't want to deal. They don't want to deal with it. They want no parts of it. Agreed. They, it's they out of their comfort zone. Right. It, yeah, exactly. They don't want any challenges to whiteness. They don't want challenges to the status quo. They would prefer that the racial hierarchy persist and not have to have their kids learn about racism beyond a surface level. Learning more about racism in depth would actually challenge people to step outside of their comfort zone. And as we all know, and as stated already, most people don't like stepping out of their comfort zone. So that's, that's really what all this is about. People just not wanting their ra- the, the, the racial hierarchy to be challenged. You know, they don't want their position in life to be challenged. They don't want their power challenged. They don't want their privilege challenged. That, that, that's what's going on. They don't want whiteness to be challenged. So that's why this is a problem. And it's a big topic right now, as I've stated before, because it's just another, it's just another distraction out there. Another red herring, like I said before. You know, it, it, it's another way to change the subject off of reparations for Black people, reparations for the descendants of American slaves. That's what all this is about. If we're, if we're going to be real here, that that's what that's why that's why there's this big big debate and discussion about it right now. Mm-hmm. So I'll just rest on that. No, very good point, sir. I think that definitely correlates to what I was saying about it brings people out of their comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? Which is the the major issue. People don't want to leave their comfort zone because as you so rightfully mentioned, it's going to change the power that they have, whether they choose to recognize it or not. Some of them pretend like they don't they don't know they have it and others know they have it and don't want to lose it. Either way, it is the reason for the pushback, and it is an example of the fact that people don't want to leave their comfort zones. They don't want to have difficult and tough conversations that they know they need to have because they are not, they won't be able any longer to use that excuse of ignorance. So definitely great stuff there, sir. E-Man, what say you, sir? Man, First and foremost, before, you know, I continue with my thought, I I had told, you know, Naya and PAT I want to go last on this only because, you know, I want to add a big bang, as I always do. So, you know, first and foremost, I was a little bit confused about the whole, you know, critical race theories, because when I hear the word theory, you know, it's a thought and an assumption, you know, only because everything that we tend to hear when we hear the word theory has to do with some type of experiment, you know? And the reason why I say this, because when you create a theory, when you create a theory, a thought, you know, you know, you, you, you put it into a place where I build a procedure, run a, you know, a test, get my results and I draw up a conclusion, which creates, you know, a thought of an assumption of something that, you know, we just experiment. So when I look at this, you know, and um, it's a very, it, it's not shocking, but it's, it's, it's silly. And the reason why I'm saying this is because people, like, like you all guys stated, you know, people don't want to, you know, step out their comfort zone. And that's, that's definitely agreeable, you know, but here comes the one thing that most of them tend to forget, you know, do you think that many people, not just because they don't step out their comfort zone, what about the uncomfortability about others around you? You know, you don't think about that, you know? So when you look at, when I see this, I look at this, you know, you know, you know, 
they're trying to figure out, well, you know, it's not our fault. I was like, your government writes all your history. So they tell you what history is, you know, when we go to school and I'm an educator, when we go to school, you know, you know, you are told what is actual history until you go look it up yourself. History is everywhere. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Just like yesterday was history today and a few hours later, it's history, you know, you know? but Many people are telling people what the information they're looking at is not real history. Why? Because they still want to keep validating scripted history, you know? Excuse me. And, and if we're going to keep validating scripted history, then what are we going to keep getting? The same BS that's going on today, you know? Absolutely agree. The same BS. It's yeah, not going to change true. whatsoever the same at all you know you know all we do is now we're pointing fingers well this and that well this person's wrong this person's right you know that's what we've been doing and then you guys talk about like yo we want this to stop how are you going to stop something when we can't even talk about the actual history about something you know like I think I saw one of the um, the hearings and whatnot, and I think a junior senator was actually, I think he was at his hearing, and I was just watching it. But it was just very interesting how the committee kept cutting them off towards certain things, you know, that you guys keep trying to remove from the books. Like, they keep talking about removing slavery. I was like, why do you want to remove something that you know that a group of people did that and joined it, you know? Yes, that's we don't, yeah, you got, and this is the thing. Nobody talks about how many slave trades there were. There were many slave trades. But here comes the one thing. Do you know, many people don't even know who started the slave trade, but I know who started the slave trade and whatnot, you know? The Arabs started the slave trade, and then afterwards, they started telling people, well, go do this and come join us and whatnot, you know? And that's how the Spaniards got into the slave trade. That's the reason why the UK got into the slave trade. Many people don't even know that and whatnot. But you know the only slave trade they talked about when we was in school? The, the, uh, the Spanish slave trade with Christopher Columbus and whatnot. Mm -hmm. The same man who raped and murdered and incest women and whatnot. But then they flipped the day and called it National Indigenous Day. Do you know how sick and vile that is? You know? These are the things that they do to keep hiding history, you know? But when I go read and actually open up a book and find what history is, you telling me, no, that's not real, you know? No, you know? So you make me look crazy, you know? But then you don't want to have the actual conversation about this actually happened, you know? And I'm going to just end it on this note, you know? You know? If we want to do better, we got to be better. You know, that's the goal every single day. That's what I wake up to every day. You know, I try to be a better person every day because I'm trying to do better, not just for myself, but others around me. So that one, I'm not going to be ignorant anymore. You know, that I'm willing to teach people, but others have to teach themselves also, too. That's that's the issue, you know. The art of everything has disappeared because they hear the truth, you know? Does the truth hurt? Yes, it hurts. It hurts extremely bad, but it's better to hear the truth. They keep sitting down, still going through lies and keep arguing, complaining like, I'm tired of black people talking about race every single day, how they're being oppressed and all this. Like, oh, we can do this, we can do that, you know? If that's the case, why do I always have to watch a silly video about how, how, how something has to be dis disproportionate to someone who's black versus those who are white and whatnot. You know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be coming on the computer or on the internet to watch something like that. If, if we're saying this is fair versus what's not fair and whatnot, you know, because I tell everyone like this, if I go watch a video and you see a black realtor being very disrespectful to a white person, what do you think might happen, you know? You guys might uproar, yell, scream, and call him all types of names, you know? 
When the roles reverse, not much happened. But they want us to speak up on it. But then when we speak up on it, what what happens? Well, you know what? You know, you know, well, that didn't happen. Well, he should have done this versus that, you know. Now you're adding opinions, you know, to something that you feel like you don't see it, you know. So you pick and choose what you want to see. And we can keep going on and on about this whole race, like the whole critical race theory. But just remember, it's a theory. It's a thought and an assumption that you guys think no matter what they do or think what they're going to say, that there's some type of end trail. You know, I've talked to a lot of people, even elders and whatnot, even from them, they say history keeps repeating themselves. So they don't even see an end. So if they can't even see an end and they don't even know when it might end, you know, that's telling me I don't know what's going to end until what? Until somebody takes that stance and whatnot, you know, because anybody can take that stance. Anybody can step up and whatnot. But here comes the thing. When someone steps up, everyone wants to shadow them and be like, nah, we're not going to be behind you and whatnot, you know, because you guys enjoy your own comfortability and don't want nothing to change or you don't even want to change yourself. So to me, this is it's it's always going to be silly. Because we all keep thinking about the what ifs, you know, but I always want to do better and be better. And I do that every single day. I can applaud people who's willing to do that. There's many out there who don't want to do that, you know, and this is where we're stuck at the place that we're stuck at right now. And it's never going to change until, you know, we all demand the actual real history and real things that everyone needs to know so that everyone can be content with everything. You know, and that's how I'm just going to end it from there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and great points there by both of you. Um, I would like to just um, add one quick note, because this was actually um, a comment from um, Professor Hosang at um, Yale, who who wrote um, the, the critical race theory explained. Um, and he said, the, and this is this is a direct quote from the article. Hosang described critical race theory, not as content or a set of beliefs, but rather an approach that encourages us to move past the superficial explanations that are given about equality and suffering right. and to ask for new kinds of explanations. Right. That was a very critical text to me when I read this article. I think all of our points touched on that one way or another, but I think Professor Hosang wrapped that up very well. Absolutely. I agree. But before all right, we, fellas. Oh, I'm before, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, before we move on to the next topic, all right? So I went out and, you know, I got me an epimology like dictionary. So I want to give everyone the actual origin of the word privilege, all right? So the word privilege, all right, it actually means grant and commission, all right? But into the sense to old French and whatnot, that it means privilege, right? Priority and privilege. But when you put it in a Latin sense, it stands for law applying to one person or bills or a law in favors of or against an individual, all right? So when anybody hears that word privilege, all right? And I know the big one is the whole white privilege thing. Hmm? The word means what it stands for itself, you know what? The only difference is when you create new phrases, when you add a new word to it, that is where we're at. So that's why I wanted to validate, you know, what the professor said and everything, you know, and this is and, and basically it was best said, you know, after, you know, Nye Angel already said it already. But this is just proving the same point just to make sure that what the professor said is actually, you know, something we can hopefully, you know, lead towards. So absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you.